we have a long athletic team that can make second and third efforts and um, just continue to move the ball on the offensive end. I think we got good looks last game. Uh, we were aggressive, but we could have been more aggressive. We, you know, we can't turn the ball over because they capitalize on every one of those mistakes. So, uh, but you know, def defensively, just you know, making sure we help each other out more, uh, and offensively moving the ball and uh, playing, you know, not playing in the crowd. There's a report out again today that Serge might be back for Game Three. Someone said maybe if the NBA Finals. Will you comment on that? Well, I'm just going with what I've been told our medical people, which I have a lot of respect for, uh, he's not coming back. There's nothing, nothing has changed. I mean, there's no reason to keep bringing this up, and he's not coming back. Well, for more on Game 2 tonight in the Western Conference Finals, ESPN NBA insider Chris Broussard joining us from San Antonio. Chris, considering the, the absence of Ibaka and the way they were really outplayed, especially in the paint in Game 1, how confident do the Thunder seem heading into tonight's Game 2? Well, they seem fine, and that's one of the benefits of being a young team. They don't know any better. They don't know they're on the edge of danger. <laughs> they're too young to know any better to be scared. So they're very confident. And also, Coach Scott Brooks, when they looked at the film, he was able to show them what they didn't do. So they're going into game two feeling like game one wasn't about the Spurs just outplaying us and being so good. It was about us not doing what we needed to do. They felt like they paid too much attention to the three-point line, were too concerned with that, that they gave up too much in the paint. So now you'll see more of a focus on the paint tonight and trying to use their length and athleticism to get out and work harder and contest the three-point shot. Scotty Brooks said at the shoot-around, he's going to go with the same starting five, Nick Collison, Kendrick Perkins on the front line with uh, Kevin Durant. But you'll probably see more of Steven Adams as well. Only played 17 minutes in game one. You'll probably see more of him in game two tonight. You might remember Adams from that round one situation, certainly with Zach Randolph against Memphis and forcing Randolph to be suspended for that game seven. Let's talk about Tony Parker. He has the other big injury in this series, Chris, that hamstring injury. He was certainly effective in game one at 14 points and 12 assists. How much of an issue is that injury for him? Well, Tony said at practice yesterday he felt better, and he expects to feel better tonight in game two. So I don't think it will be any sort of factor for Tony Parker. You mentioned the 14 points. Greg Popovich mentioned yesterday that, you know, that's not usually what Tony scores. He usually gives you 19, but he took what the game gave him. You had Manu Ginobili giving you 18 points and Tim Duncan 27. Now, we're not expecting to get that from them tonight. So with them coming down, I expect to see Parker scoring more closer to 20 points tonight than he was in game one. Tip off for game two set for about 9 o'clock Eastern time. NBA insider Chris Broussard with the latest on SportsCenter. And if the Thunder does want to get back in this series, they certainly do because teams who go up two games to none take a 94% chance to go on and, and win that seven-game series. they got to address the point situation in the paint. San Antonio's 66 points has only been eclipsed once in the last 15 postseasons for the Spurs, and they hung 72 on the Suns. That was back in 2008.